morning, good afternoon, good evening to all. Welcome to Mando Lessons Live. My name is Baron. I hope you're all doing well. <clears throat> if this is your first time here, let me know in the chat. Let everybody know in the chat. Uh, got anything to say? The chat's the place to put it. Love to see it go flying by. Love trying to keep up. Got folks from all over already. We got Adele and Neil and Sheldon and Uncle Bobby, Joe, James, Lewis, Linda, Andy, Sherry, all sorts of folks. Love to see it. Thanks for tuning in. The way these work is it's an hour of Q&A. So if you have any questions relating to music or mandolin or any of that sort of thing, throw them out there. I may have an answer. <laughs> I may not, but we'll give it a shot. Ooh, that rhymed. Um, and if you have a tune you want to hear, such as that first tune that I just played, which is the tune of the week, which the name of that is The Earl's Chair. We're going to play that together as a little play-along jam at the end of the hour. So stick around, and I'll jump into the chat and see what we got going on. But great to see you all here. Sheldon says, has anyone reached their 10,000 hours yet? Yeah, that's a, I feel like I've been hearing a lot about the 10,000 hours again. It, it was in a book. I can't remember what book a couple years ago and sort of had a big I, I heard about it a bunch a couple years ago and then it kind of dissipated um i i have hit my ten thousand hours um like it's i kind of feel two ways about that it's sort of like ten thousand hours is a little overwhelming to kind of think about you know you could break it down if you practice an hour a day for 10 years well wait 30 years? <laughs> How does that work? Uh, you need 10,000 days. There's 365 days in a year. So 10,000 divided by 365. <laughs> yeah, so 27 years at an hour a day. Um, you know, that can just be a little bit discouraging. So ultimately, like, the last thing that I want is for kind of musicians to feel discouraged about how much they're able to practice or have fun which is why I always kind of uh focus on having fun on the instrument rather than kind of thinking about all the work ahead of me or things like that you know I think a lot of the practice that I did early on um I didn't even think about it as practice necessarily I was just like I knew three chords and would play those three chords over and over and over again and be having a blast and watch the hours slip by um, and then it's, it's hard because as we play more, we learn more about like what practice is and how it can be good and how it can be frustrating and all those things. It just kind of makes us more aware of the time. Um, so if you're having fun, you know, I think that's a big thing for me is like, it's not so much like, you know, 10,000 hours of playing and practice. If you're excited about the practice component and listening, there's so many different aspects um, that it doesn't really uh, exist in a vacuum, but it's certainly something that you can kind of think about. And if if you can use it as like fuel to to get some like healthy practice and play time in, that's great. But I never want the ten thousand hours to kind of discourage anyone. It's it's kind of an arbitrary number, you know. Why isn't it twelve thousand? Why isn't it eight thousand? All that sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> again, going on, 10,000 hours of worry, <laughs> hit that a long time ago. Yeah, no, no, no worries needed for, for music. It's all about having fun and, and hanging out with other friendly musical people. Uh, <clears throat> when can I, uh, this is from Adele, when can I find in advance if the live lesson is happening? If I'm on top of my game on Fridays, I will, like Friday afternoon usually, I put up the live stream so you can sort of see that it's going to happen the next day um, sometimes I don't know for myself um, I try to put a post out about it if I can but life gets busy sometimes um, and what is the difference between Friday and sorry <laughs> what is the difference between Saturday and Sunday live streams so Saturday is what you're seeing now um, it's totally public and live and uh, happens every Saturday that I can swing it and Sunday is a patron-only live stream for anyone pledging on Patreon for $5 a month or more. You get access to a patron-only live stream. Um, it's a little smaller. I can dive a little more uh, in-depth into questions um, because sometimes this, I can hear the, you know, I can hear the chat 
um, kind of humming away here, and sometimes it's hard to keep up. But you know, instead of like up to like fifty people or more on the on the Saturday stream, sometimes we only have like ten, and you can really get to know people better. Um, so that's the difference between Saturday and Sunday. Got people coming in, saying hello. Andy's firing things up already with the super chat. I appreciate it. However, people choose to support is greatly appreciated, whether it's super chats or PayPal or Patreon or buying merch, uh, whatever your choice. Greatly appreciated, but not required. Um, and Andy says, finally home for one of these. Yeah, glad to have you here. Yeah, and Neil says 10,000 hours is crazy. Break it down to something you can hope to achieve. Yeah, that's another thing is like, you know, especially if you're just starting out and thinking about 10,000 hours, you know, you say, oh, like, you know, life is busy. If you have like an hour a day to play music, you know, thinking like, okay, it's going to take 27 years of an hour a day to hit my 10,000 hours. Like, that's not, that's not a helpful way to think about, you know, if you can... I, I, I feel grateful if I can get an hour a day in and this is my job, um, especially when it comes to like however you think of practice, like really kind of in the in the depths of developing new skills and being really uh, specific about what you're working on. That's hard to to manage. Um, so. <laughs> Lewis says three hours down, nine, 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 seven to go. But you've had a little bit of. A little bit of practice before yesterday, too. <laughs> oh, awesome. Linda says, I bought a bazooki. Love playing as a mandolin. Awesome. Congratulations. That's a, a very fun, fun instrument. Many happy hours played with it, I hope. Julia from Germany. Good to have you here. Got some nice location talk in the chat. Love to see it. Hey, Kyle, good to have you here. It says, just got my first mandolin yesterday. It's got to have strings. Getting ready to order them and get it ready to go. Awesome. Congratulations on the journey and uh, welcome. Uh, Joe says, accidentally muted my sound when you announced the tune of the week. It is uh, the Earl's Chair. It's a great Irish reel. Kind of in D, or you could maybe, maybe make an argument for D minor on that A part, um, but I would say D. Oh, Malcolm Gladwell wrote about it. That's who it was, the 10,000 hour thing. So many tunes, so little time. Yeah, it's, it's hard to, it's, I mean, there's definitely a huge mental game. Adele says, thinking musicians live in a perpetual state of discouragement. It definitely, yeah, it's, you know, you can really get bogged down in the, like, the mental side of things. But, you know, that's what I really like about kind of tunes in general and social music is it's not necessarily a, an act of feat or skill or fireworks. It's just sort of like, you know, I, learning to play a tune so that you can play it with other people. And then you get out there and do it and everybody's in a different place, but you all have fun playing music and it's a great time you know no matter how fast you're going or slow like i don't like it's fun to for me to like play fast with a bunch of people who really want to play fast and be energetic but also i love playing slow like i'll play slow sessions all day every day it's, there's always something to work on all right hey ruth has seen the pizza john shirt yeah always gotta love the the green brothers All right, gonna catch up. This is great. I love seeing the chat go, f go speeding right along. Denise, good to have you here. All right, out mowing. Love it. <laughs> nice. Glad you got your husband to to keep track for the the mandolin, the important stuff. The lawn can wait. <laughs> but appreciate you coming, coming and saying hello. If it is fun, you persist. When discouraged, then improvements are a happy discovery. I like that, Jim. Yeah, me too. Neil says, I, I like seeing the same folks here each week. Yeah, me too. And I love everybody kind of chatting amongst themselves. Does Amanda Live go with a martini? Of course. It's a little early for me on the martini front. It's only 10 in the morning, but 
You do you, wherever you're at. <laughs> I know Jim is not in Pacific time. I think. I can't totally remember. Oh, Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can. Probably a nice little Saturday afternoon martini. It's probably called for once in a while. <laughs> All right, Denise is on the banjo train. Love it. Ursula, it's good to have you here. You're just just a few minutes late. You haven't missed anything too, too out there yet. Um, but good to have you here. All right, I think I've caught up with the chat. If I miss something, as always, just throw it back in there and I'll try to get to it. Maybe I'll play another tune in here. Oh, I wonder if we can remember that tune. for the week is what is that tune i can't remember the name of it but it got played in a session the other day um and i get it real confused with the green mountain because it kind of starts the same i can't remember what it's called but maybe somebody out there does it. i know it's fairly classic um so if, if anybody out there has the name of that tune i would appreciate it <laughs> and i'll catch up with the chat About a year ago, I joined a group, this is from Neil, that jams every month bluegrass, a lot of banjos, one or two guitars, an occasional fiddle, and one other mandolin. Great practice. Yeah, that's, you know, if you can get, if you can find a community, um, you know, and uh, get out there and play, that's like, that's the biggest boost for me, you know, especially just like sitting in your house, like, I can definitely keep myself entertained playing music a lot of the time, but sometimes, you know, enough, enough time without kind of any social experience i get a little kind of burned out um so it's, it's a good way to get a bunch of practice in build some new skills learn some new repertoire make some new friends all that sort of thing joe says still looking for somewhere to play and others to play with been practicing alone with no end game for two years my idea of music is a community event uh what part of the country are you in um, you can, I would ask on Mandolin Cafe, there's a whole section in the forum on like jams and community events and you can be like, Hey, I'm in this part of the world. Like where are people to pick with? And you know, it, it's often, um, 
hardest, and Linda, uh, Linda is saying the same. And that's very common, you know, to, especially, you know, these days. It's, it's easy, <laughs> easy to uh, kind of miss the social aspect. But And it's hard. I think the hardest thing to do is find, like, the first one. And, you know, I would say don't be picky about, like, what you find. It may not be, like, the perfect fit, but you'll meet people and they'll be able to send you in the right direction. So if you really want to play old-time tunes or bluegrass and all you find is an iris session that's like up to speed and you can't keep up, just go listen and then like have a conversation with the people and be like, hey, this sounds great. Uh, you know, do you know anything about like where I could go to find some old time or bluegrass around town? Um, and they probably will because there, there's, you know, as much as Irish musicians sometimes will only play Irish music, it's kind of fiddle tune world is a small world and I bet there's people who like both. Um, and they'll say, oh yeah, check out such and such. Um, or people will be like, oh yeah, I also want to play old time tunes but i haven't found a group let's yet let's get together and, and play some tunes things like that um so just like you know whatever you can find even if it's not your ideal social event just go out and have a listen see if it's see if it seems like a good thing and just kind of start chatting with folks and see what comes out of the woodwork joe says the acoustic music or the acoustic shop on youtube demoed my eastman 515 today very cool nice to see your own instrument out on the interweb um sheldon says been thinking about refretting my mando and replacing the nut i've done the nut before but i'm wondering how challenging it will be to do the fret job uh as in like doing the work yourself i know f frets can be tricky i've never tried it myself i've never made a nut myself either um but uh, if you're thinking of doing it yourself, I would say go to Mandolin Cafe um, in the like builder and repair section. Be like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Got any tips? I'm sure there's tons of resources out there. I'm not familiar. I know there's like frets.com, Frank Ford's website. Um, and he's got a lot of kind of helpful step-by-step -step stuff on how to do repairs. Uh, but between that um, and Mandolin Cafe forums... Just dive in and start asking questions and you'll you'll learn a lot pretty quick. Do you play different uh do you play different music at dances? Uh yes, I would say <laughs> well I haven't played a lot of dances in the last two years, surprisingly. Um so when I was in New England, living in Maine, I would play a lot of contra dances where the the sort of the genre is a little bit mixed, so you you'll You'll play an Irish tune and then an old time tune and a and a, a Quebecois tune and a hombo, a Swedish tune at the break and a waltz and a shottish and a <laughs> um, you know some New England specific tunes or some Maine specific tunes, um, and that's sort of part of that kind of contra dance culture is a little bit of everything. Um, but if I'm playing it like so, the, the the first dance I played in two years was a couple weeks ago and I played a an Irish Kaylee, so I was just playing just Irish music. Or if, like a square dance, I would play just old time music. Um, so yeah, it kind of it, it depends. Any tips for not being nervous when performing? Maybe play an easy song. That is a, a huge topic and definitely one that everyone struggles with. I would say the two things that help me is, you know, being nervous is totally normal, and I think like the the first thing is just like do it every opportunity you get and you'll be a little less nervous every time. It might not be like a, a, a linear progression of like, oh, a little less, little, little less, little less because, you know, maybe you're playing tiny, tiny coffee shops and then, oh, you have an opportunity to play in front of 100 people and your nerves are going to go back up. Um, but, you know, just the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. Um, another option is try, like sort of a related thing is people often get, myself included, like get nervous uh when recording like recording yourself you know like okay this is this might end up on an album i got i need to freeze up um and so just doing that that's a good way to practice sort of like being on the spot and dealing with some of those kind of musical nerves without having to be in front of other people just kind of the idea of like okay i gotta do this right you know this is this is a recording i'm gonna be able to listen back to it that's gonna make you freeze up and the more you do it the, the, the more those nerves go away. Um, or you can, like, something that's helped me a lot is making this YouTube channel um, where, you know, if you watch some of my early videos, I'm pretty 
kind of uptight and not very expressive and I'm just kind of sitting there real real nervous and now I wave my arms around and do all kinds of stuff make mistakes like I think you know the fact that I I'll like make a mistake on one of these live things or even like in in a lesson video where I could edit it out a lot of times I you know if it's if it's just like a small thing I can just make it part of the lesson be like whoops I made a mistake let's fix that you know rather than editing it out and being like okay I, I never make mistakes like projecting that idea to the to you all um, is not what I'm aiming for because mistakes is all part of the thing. So, you know, I would say the more you do it, the easier it gets on any any level, whether it's playing in public, performing, recording, making videos, um, practicing. You know, the more, the more you play, the better you get, all that sort of thing. Yeah, and this the same thing Ersanov says, fighting the social anxiety of trying to perform in a group. Yeah, that's you know, the that's it's a tricky one. And the more you do it, the the easier it gets. So just like I would say throw yourself out there. In general, like, you know, I think what we fear, I'll speak for myself, is sort of, you know, like kind of doing something wrong and having like the people you're playing with being like, Oh, you're doing it wrong or whatever. And generally, like, if, if you like the people you're playing music with and, you, you know, you, like, match well with them, they're going to be nice about it because we like to hang out with nice people. So, um, you know, so, like, and everybody, as you'll find that as soon as you start playing, like, everybody's going to be making mistakes. You know, we, we all might be at, like, slightly different levels, but, you know, playing with a bunch of people that are that are a lot more experienced or a lot less experienced than us put us in different situations if people are a lot more um experienced than us we sort of get the nerves it's like oh these people are really good i better like wish i could play that good but it also sort of kind of brings you up a little bit because the quality of the music is you know is is really nice and you you sort of get to like ride on their experience and skill and be like hey when i'm chopping even just like doing a, a simple little thing, it sounds great because I'm surrounded by all these great musicians. And if you're playing with people that are a lot less experienced than you, then you're sort of put in the in the situation of like, okay, like I'm being looked at as sort of like a way to lead this this ensemble a little bit. So like, what can I do? How can I explain things clearly? And it, it sort of, you become a little bit of a teacher and figure out like okay how can I explain things how can I guide this group in a way that makes everybody have fun Orange County is where Joe is at I'm sure there's something around I would post on Mandolin Cafe um Let me make sure I feel like I might have missed something. Ah, okay, so I'm just trying to catch up with a little conversation. Betsy says, post in your area, and Joe says, I'm not at that level. I would say, get out there before you're at that level, because, and I definitely fall into this trap of like, oh yeah, I'll just like practice a bunch, and then I'll be ready, and then I can go do the thing. Whether it's like playing music or any other sort of skill, like, oh yeah, I'll just do a bunch of re or like, you know, like making any sort of like decision or action is sort of like, oh, what? Like research is easy. I'll just do a bunch of research. I'll do a bunch of practicing. I'll, I'll, I'll get it all right. And then I'll go do the thing. Um, and that can certainly help, but it's not nearly as fast or as fun. Uh, you know, you might have a little bit like the social anxiety, but, um, it's a lot it's a lot more beneficial to get out there before you're ready and find all the other people that are also out there or try to convince other people who think they're not ready be like hey i'm not ready either let's do this um because if everybody's out there before they're ready then you're right in the middle of the pack and i think people often think like oh i'm not i'm not good enough to go do such and such yet um but then they get out there and they're like oh, okay yeah I'm, I'm a little more kind of in the middle of the pack than i thought 
Lewis has got some good tips. When performing, stay in the moment. Try not to let your mind wander. Seems to keep the wrong mistakes at a minimum. That is definitely true. Yeah, sometimes when I get on stage and I'm like not familiar, I just sort of space out and that doesn't help. <laughs> Yeah, that's another, uh, Betsy says, uh, notice that Irish and old-time musicians are very kind to beginners. I would very much agree. It's the reason, you know, and even like, and bluegrass, which is a little more kind of a performance-based thing, because people are like taking solos and stuff like that, you know, going to local bluegrass festivals or jams or whatever, even if you're not ready, like, that's sort of part of the, part of the social tradition is just like everybody's there, everybody's at a different level. If you make a mistake, whatever. Everybody else is going to at some point, and um, you know you'll, you're just kind of like learning in the moment, and that'll really speed things up and get you get you ready to kind of learn fast. Ooh, cool. Oscar says thinking about playing a Norwegian wedding march for a friend's wedding. I'm curious what that tune is. I love Norwegian wedding marches. Um. Linda says, I have an Irish pub that just opened. Heard they play all kinds of music. The owners are from Ireland. Hope to check it out. Definitely do. Nice. And otherwise, I turn on Irish background music and play alone. Yeah. Or, you know, like, if maybe if they don't have any music yet because they just opened, um, maybe you can start something. Say, like, hey, can I come in here and, like, maybe just, like, play a little background music for people. Or, and then maybe somebody else will show up and be like, oh, nice, I like the background music. And be like, you play, and then you start a little session or something. <laughs> yes, there are also, Fiddle Camps is a great way to do it, too. Fiddle Camps and f music festivals and things like that. You might have to travel a little bit, but they're definitely out there. Listening is practicing is great advice from Adele. Ah, uh, yep, yeah, okay. Uh, that is that is the, the, the tricky thing at this point. I mean, maybe you could, if you know how to reach out, Joe says there's uh, some music in Anaheim, but they've been shut down since the pandemic. If you can figure out, like, who was involved in that and reach out and be like, hey, I know that your that thing is shut down, but are there any other musical opportunities? Um, I bet I bet there's something going on. It's just kind of hard to, that's the thing. Is in the, this day and age, it's, it's hard to find the thing. Be because, you know, kind of the social aspect has been shut down a little bit. But I bet there's, like, smaller groups that are meeting up, and it's just a little harder to find. But any, any resources you can find to just, like, ask the question, whether it's Mandolin Cafe or trying to get in touch with some of the Anaheim folks, I think will lead you in the right direction. Nice. Betsy says, I invited two semi-pros to my house, and we had a blast. Definitely the third wheel, but they understood, and it was fine. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, is, like, you know, if you're if you're in, like, way over your head and, like, can't keep up, like, as long as you're not, like, actively, as long as you're making, like, a conscious effort to, like, try to keep up and play things that sound good, or even sometimes just, like, sit back and be like, wow, this I can't figure this one out. I do this to this day all the time. You know, I play very frequently in an Irish pub around here and like it's it's sort of it's more of like kind of a performance it's not really a session um so I'll, I'll show up on a Monday night and play some tunes and you know in a performance situation like they just start some tune that I don't know and you just sit back be like oh this is nice I'm gonna sit back and listen to this one and it adds a little bit of variety too as like you know a little bit of uh dynamics if like you know i'm usually playing tenor banjo the tenor banjo drops out for a tune um for dramatic effect but really it's just because i don't know the tune and then i come back in on the next one that i do know and it adds a little bit of energy back into the sound yeah ursa says if i can buckle down and learn the rhythm parts of tunes i'll look into that um yeah or even just go and like what i i and you know, I'm basing this mostly on, like, my own experiences because that's what I know best. Um, I often will go to a session, you know, if it's, it's in, like, a restaurant or something or wherever you can find it, in a park or just, like, at a dedicated space. Just go and listen. You know, you'd, like, I don't even, like, when I first started going to this 
Irish pub. I knew there were musicians there. I liked the music they were playing. Um, so I would just go, like, the first probably half dozen times I went, I would go and just, like, listen, figure out what tunes they were playing, talk to them a little bit, and eventually they said, oh, like, you know, bring a banjo sometime, and kind of worked in from there, rather than, like, going the first time with a banjo and expecting to, like, really know what's going on and understanding the scene. Like, you can get a lot of those cues just by going a couple times without an instrument. That way you, you're, like... You know, you're not going to be required to play. No one's going to be like, hey, take that mandolin out of the case and play us a tune. That can be scary. But if you don't have a mandolin with you, you can't do that. So you can just go listen and, and get the get the feel for what, what it's like. And be like, hey, do these people seem friendly? Like, does this seem like a sort of scene that I'd be interested in? Yeah, Neil says a lot of good questions you can ask. What key is it in? What's the tempo? Jig, waltz, reel? Um, all that sort of stuff that you get just from listening. Is, is really helpful. Yes. Uh, and James says, uh, finding in-person teachers and getting them to jam with you, play along the tracks, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, totally. Churches can be a huge um, resource for other music makers around. There you go. Yeah, Adele says, if you sit in... Sit at a session and pull out a notebook. People will start t telling you the names of tunes even before you ask. Yes. Uh, and Adele says, my Irish music is rec recommending sh uh, Shannon and Matt Heaton. Um, right after this, this live stream, they're doing their first Saturday of the month Irish Jam YouTube video. If you, if you look up Shannon Heaton, um, they will be playing some awesome Irish tunes. I'll probably try to sneak in there and, and play along virtually like the rest of everybody as well because they do a great thing and really, really lovely Irish tunes. Thank you, Joe, for the super chat. Really appreciate that. Cool. Awesome. Says, I know a professional Irish fiddle and mandolin player. Have a lot of avenues to pursue. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's definitely scary to like put yourself out there and be like, "Hey, I want to do this thing." But everybody, even if if they're professionals, like everybody has been a non-professional. Everybody's been a beginner, and especially I think you know in like the folk music scene because it's really a social experience, almost like equally as it is a musical experience. Um, you know, people are really friendly. Everybody knows the feeling of like wanting to do a thing and not being able to like make that leap so people are generally very friendly about it and if people are kind of snotty about it then it probably isn't like a social scene that you want to be hanging out in anyway if people are like unfriendly i know you know even if the tunes are great i like in general i don't find really like unfriendly musicians out there but if i did i wouldn't really want to hang out with them anyway regardless of how good the music was Nice. Lewis has got a tune, The Hollies. I don't know that group or that song. Uh, four chords and fun to play. Yeah, yeah, mix it up, you know. I teach a lot of fiddle tunes, but if you like songs and bluegrass and pop music or whatever, classical, um, play a lot of that. Cool. I need to, uh, apparently Shannon Heaton's got a podcast too called Irish Music Stories. I'll have to look that up. I'm not familiar. All right, that was a lot of talking, so maybe I'll play another tune here real quick, just to break it up a little bit. I'll play, a, play an old-time tune. <laughs> What's it going to be, though?
bit of a new five cent piece, and then I went into Coleman's March, and per request, that's a little faster than I normally play Coleman's. It was fun to try out. I think I kind of prefer it a little slower. But it works. Lonesome Moonlight Waltz. I can never remember how that tune goes. It's lovely. It might be copyrighted, but it's good. Uh, ooh, James says, haven't had many technical questions today. In Irish tunes, when you're playing in a minor key, what is your method of switching between minor and major chords? How to connect them in interesting ways? Ooh, New Five Cent is not on my site. I, it should be. If it's not, I should make a lesson for it. I learned that one from Alf, who you probably... Recognize them occasionally. Huh. Maybe it's not. Five cent. Huh. Ah, I guess maybe it's not. It's a great tune. I thought I put it up there, but I guess I should make a lesson. Uh... <laughs> yeah, the, the Coleman's did have a lot of extra notes. I mean, I wasn't... I was doing a little fancy stuff. But mostly it was kind of like that right hand, taking it from... Just like the same number of left hand things, but the right hand is just kind of doing a lot of shuffles. And I was doing some like... weaving around, filling in some of that space. But this question on Irish accompaniment, uh, how to connect the uh, I, minor, minor, I can't speak, minor tunes, going from those minor and major chords in interesting ways. So let's see. I mean, a lot of times the thing with, it's a good question that I struggle with sometimes because it's, it's pretty... There often isn't a lot of chordal stuff going on in those minor tunes in Irish music. Like, a lot of times you'll have, like, the chords are A minor and G and A minor, and that's it. Um, so I think, like, the, you know, starting out with maybe an A minor tune or a, an E minor tune that's just going to be E minor and D and E minor. I think the way to keep it interesting is to have a couple different versions of the chord that you can play. So if you're in E minor, you've got like this classic E minor, open two, two, open. Then your classic D is two, open, open, two. And it can get a little monotonous to just do this the whole time. Maybe finding another minor chord like four or two two. It's just one note different. Something is awry here on my tuning. strings is what I really need. Yeah. Once again, close enough. Um, so, you know, yeah, by having different, like, if you have this E minor chord, 4, 2, open, open, sorry, 4, four 2, 2, open, and then you can kind of go to your regular D, and then your regular E minor. 
back to your regular, or maybe to a different D, two, four, five. By having a couple different options, like if you have three E minors and three D majors, A, it's a great way to practice, you know, rather than like putting your fingers in the shape and being like, okay, that's a new D shape, I'm done. Like putting it into the practice of a two chord song where you say, okay, I've got the, the only chords are E minor and D, which is classic for a lot of E minor Irish tunes. Um, let's sort of say like, okay, I'll go through once and play these two, and then I'll go through once and play these other two, then go through once and play these other two, and then try to like mix them together, and you'll start kind of running into some kind of bass line opportunity. So, you know, different ways that I can play E minor and D. minor and D back and forth but with different voicings and that gives you a little bit more to work with in terms of like bass lines like if you think about the bass going from your classic E minor to D major to your alternate E minor then your bass line is going bum, bum, bum. or if you're using this E minor in there things like that so by having you know if you have like a five chord song and you're trying to do five different versions of each one of those chords that's just gonna like melt your brain that's too much to think about but if you have a two chord song and you have two or three different versions of those two chords that's a great way to be able to like kind of systematically plug different ideas in and and work with different voicings and that's how I mostly kind of try to spice things up a little bit with those minor tunes great question uh jim says i was trying to play a guitar tune with a b minor seven chord in it is that a thing on a mandolin yes so anytime the way that i read chords like if you see something that says like play a b minor seven you can kind of read it left to right in order of importance so b well it's not b major b minor so if you play a b minor if you have like the note of the chord, the root of the chord, and whether it's major or minor, that's going to be like, if you just play that, it'll sound fine. And then if you want to add that minor 7, what that does is it takes uh, your, so your key, B minor, and the 7th note of B minor is that A, so you need to get an A, so you have your B minor chord, and you say, okay, where can I put... Focus, there we go. Like, you think. There's my B minor, 4457. And say, okay, where's an, where can I find an A in this? Well, I've got an A, fifth fret instead of seventh fret, and we already have a B. So we can do 4455. Five. And that's your B minor with the seven. Seventh note of the B minor scale is A. So you're just, you're just trying to slip an A somewhere into the B minor chord, and generally kind of higher up in the chord voicing. If you put an A right in the bass of that B minor, then like, so let's take like the first three notes, uh, B, F sharp, D, so that's three notes of B minor, and if you try to put that seven, that A in the bass, not only are you taking away the only root in the chord, that the only B note in your little shape? Um, it also becomes what's essentially like a D chord, A F sharp B. So there, there's some kind of crossover. So if you're gonna put like a seventh or a sixth or a nine uh, uh, kind of into a chord, some of those kind of higher color tones, try to put them higher up in the voicing and not kind of in the bass.
as a general rule you can if there's a bass player and a guitar player then you can put those color tones lower down because probably the bass player is going to be playing the root and that's going to be what's sort of creating that foundation of this is a b minor chord and you get the lower voice of the guitar so um you know if there's a bass player playing a b and a guitar player playing a b minor you say okay i'm going to play a b minor seven and you play that classic d shape it's going to work because that a is just going to be kind of a uh, a color tone on top of all of that other really foundational B minor sound. Tom says, going to get my first mandolin at a local shop in a few days. Congratulations. That's a lot of fun. Always an exciting time. Many, I hope you have many happy, happy days with it. We need a tune called the Restringing Blues because restringing stinks. That is the truth. I was doing some restringing yesterday on a banjo and did not like it one bit. Nice. Very exciting. Oh yeah, definitely. Tom says, hope my violin experience helps with the learning process. Definitely, yeah. The left hand's going to be pretty much the same. Just kind of getting used to frets rather than like kind of the fretless fingerboard. But you're, you'll are you have an idea of sort of where your fingers go. And the, the big thing is going to, for you, that's for all violinists coming come to mandolin or fiddle, um, is just kind of getting used to the pick. But... Check out my beginner series, and that'll get you into the right, right uh, direction. Yes. Uh, so and so Neil says, uh, chord tones for B minor seven are B, D, F sharp, and A. So if you look at that and you take out the B, then you have D, F sharp, A, which is a D major. That's where these like minor sevens and majors can kind of get a little funny if you don't hit the right number. And again, depends on whether there's like a bass or a piano or a guitar. Um, if somebody else is playing that big B minor, you can put that A wherever you want. But if you if you, if you put the A in instead of the B, if you replace your B with an A on a mandolin, you end up with a D chord, not a B minor 7 chord. Ursana says, only complaint on the Eastman is that the tailpiece has sharp edges, digs into the skin of the forearm a lot. Yeah, that definitely can happen. I find that on my banjo is like this kind of stamped thing. I mean, one thing you could look into is getting an armrest that will just like kind of move your arm away from the tailpiece a little bit. Um, it kind of depends on playing style. They even make, I've seen some armrests. It can be annoying to get to restring, but I've seen this guy... Um, Doug Edwards of Hill County String Works, I think. So this is a, called a McClung Armrest. I think maybe made for a musician or a friend of his named something McClung. Um, they named it after it. But I think they make some of these where the the the, the armrest actually go like cantilevers out over the tailpiece. So it, it kind of gets in the way. Um, that could make it a little more easy. And there's also sometimes you can like take a little sandpaper to it or take off the tailpiece cover or things like that. Um, or put like, sometimes I just like figure out a way to like get some foam down in that, that area. Yeah. I hear you on the, the the budget they're de they're definitely like these ones these mcclungs are definitely kind of spendy but you can find some on like amazon or ebay or wherever that are like probably like 10 bucks or under maybe that might not be entirely true um but it can can definitely work because like yeah these are these kind of can get a little expensive but but there are there are less expensive options like um you're kind of splitting hairs once you get into like what kind of armrest um so i would say you know something something especially for like a first armrest if you want to like see if it really um helps or not um can just getting whatever's cheapest is what i always do um yeah and, and uh 
Joe says, tailpiece or bridge? My arm's nowhere near the tailpiece, but my bridge is a little sharp. Yeah, that definitely depends, like, on your playing style. Like, my arm stays a little further away from the bridge just from, like, the tilt of the neck of the instrument. Or, sorry, stays away from the tailpiece from the tilt of the instrument. But you watch people like Mike Compton, and he's got his arm right over the tailpiece. Um, so it's a little bit kind of just like technique and playing style where there's no right answer. All right, we are, wow, the time has flown by. Let's do a quick little jam on whatever the tune is. Earl's Chair, and then let's pick a tune for next time. I don't know if it'll be next week or not, but we'll figure it out. And uh, yeah, we'll have a good time here. So a little bit of Earl's Chair. I'll play the melody, you play the chords, we'll swap back and forth. I'll start with the melody. Two, three, four. Sorry, B part. back to that B minor and wants you to keep looping it um yeah there we go little, sorry that was a little short uh just it was kind of a noty tune so I played it slow and 
then it was already after 11 o'clock and we got to get over to, to Matt and Shannon's stream. So thank you all so much. Ooh, Fisher's Hornpipe is a suggestion for next time. Let me check my handy dandy notebook. What's that from? Is that <laughs> Blue's Clues? <laughs> There's something in my head there with the handy dandy notebook. Um, Fisher's Hornpipe. We have not done Fisher's Hornpipe. Incredible. That's it. Next week. Another noty one. So but it's, it's a good one. We won't go too fast. Thank you all so much for watching. Next week we'll do Fisher's Hornpipe. A classic. Um, and everybody have a great weekend. See you over at Matt, at Shannon and Matt's uh, Irish session. I think happening right now. All right. Have a good one. Thanks, y'all. Bye.